Hi everyone, my name is Bella the Actuary and in today's video, I'm going to be showing the exact resumes that got me four actual internship offers, a job offer from Allstate, and numerous other interviews from companies like State Farm, AIG, Chubb, Gallagher Reinsurance, Aon, and more. We'll start by walking through my old resumes and critiquing them, then I'll show you my current resume and I'll even show you a basic resume template that you can use for your own resume to stand out from the rest. And along the way, we'll discuss some helpful tips and tricks for creating your resume. All right, this here is the resume that got me all of my internship and job offers, except for one. You'll notice right away that my resume has a pretty unique format and color choice, which I actually got from a Canva template. And although I probably wouldn't use this resume layout today, I do think that it worked well for me in college. This was the original iteration of this resume, which included a headshot of myself. I ended up deciding to remove this photo after a while to prevent any sort of possible bias, but I personally don't think that putting a professional headshot would necessarily be a bad thing to put on a resume. I do think including a professional photo of yourself can make your resume more personable, but at the end of the day, I think that resume should really be a place to show off your experiences and your skills and interests. So let's walk through and critique this resume. You'll see that my name is at the top and it's in pretty big font. That is on purpose. I want them to see my name and remember it. I also wrote down that I was a Kemper Scholar, which is a scholarly distinction in college, which helped to speak to my academic caliber. Now the most important part of this resume and any resume, and I cannot stress this enough, is putting your exams at the top of your resume. I've heard a statistic that recruiters only read your resume for seven seconds. So it's extremely important that they have all of the necessary important information readily available. And also if you're planning to sit for any exams soon, definitely go ahead and put those on your resume too, like I did here. MAS1 sitting in October of 2023. This just helps to show your commitment to the actual profession and tells recruiters that you're taking the career seriously. Okay, so moving along, on the left-hand column here, I have my contact info, the basic information like my college, my graduation year, and my GPA. These three things are very important to have on your resume. Make sure you have your college, make sure you have your graduation date, and make sure you have your GPA listed if it's above about 3.3. If it's anything below that, I would probably just leave it off. I also have my technical skills listed here, some awards that I won, and the languages that I speak. I don't think it's necessary to have languages that you speak on your resume, but if you are applying to a consulting role or some type of role where international travel is possible, it could be something to add to show kind of a competitive advantage over other candidates. Moving on to the right side of this resume, I have my previous experiences listed. And because I was a college student when I created this resume, I included my non-actual job experiences like being an RA and a intern at a radio station and a barista at a coffee shop. But in my current resume that I'll show a little bit later in this video, I probably wouldn't include those experiences today just because they're not relevant to my actual career. I want to spend some time specifically talking about this experience section because this is arguably one of the most, if not the most important part of your resume. When writing the descriptions of your experience, so when you're writing these bullet points and describing what you did in each role, I'd suggest not using more than three to five bullet points so that it's concise. And you should also use active verbs and quantifiable numbers in your description to demonstrate your impact in that role. For example, if you look here at my resident assistant job, I said that I fostered and deepened relationships with and between about 40 residents. I didn't just say, between a group of people. I specifically said between 40 residents so that recruiters and the people who interview me know how much responsibility exactly I had. And if you look at each of my experiences, every single bullet point starts with an action verb. So adapted, prioritize, negotiate, lead, foster, effectively address, redesign, accelerated, improved, created, anticipated. You're trying to create action in your mind so that the people reading this resume can visualize what you did and the impact that you had. However, I have a very strong opinion about the type of active verbs to use in your resume. A personal pet peeve of mine is when I see resumes that have the most buzzwordy active verbs. For example, I've seen resumes that say 
spearheaded a project or pioneered a new method. First of all, as a reader of a resume, it's really hard to digest those words and it feels very ingenuine, especially because we are young professionals and we don't have that much work experience. Using those types of loaded and almost exaggerated verbs just kind of gives off a gross vibe. Unless you're really smart, that's totally cool, then keep it on there. But I think most people who use these really big active verbs are just trying to fluff up their resume when it really doesn't need to be. So instead of using those buzz wordy type of verbs, I'd suggest just using basic verbs that concisely tell the reader what you did. One thing that really helps me when I'm writing my resume is to remember that this isn't creative writing class. We're not trying to write the most descriptive lengthy sentences. We're trying to be as concise as possible. Simple language always wins in business. Finally, at the bottom of my resume here, I listed the activities that I was involved in during college to show my diverse personality and my numerous interests outside of actual science. Although you don't have to, I like to include my extracurricular activities and hobbies on my resume because it gives a conversation starter for the recruiter and the interviewer. And then if they see those and they have any of the same hobbies or interests, they can relate to you which means they're probably more likely to like you due to the infinity bias, which says that we tend to like people who are like us. You'll notice as I continue walking through my resumes that a lot of the design choices that I made were based on psychology concepts. It's really important to understand the psychology behind the design of your resumes so that you can capture the recruiter's attention and stand out. Putting your hobbies can also show that you're not one dimensional. Of course, if you are totally into actual science and you spend all your time doing that, that's awesome and you're probably super smart. But I think a lot of times recruiters don't want someone who is 100%, 24-7, always about actual science because they want someone who is also a team player and someone who has good communication skills. I've actually had multiple interviews where they asked me to explain my experience as a videographer on the VS Pink campus team because that is a pretty unique experience. Not many people have that and they hadn't heard of it, which just goes to show that if you put interesting things on your resume, then people will likely ask about it and it gives you another opportunity to talk about the skills and things you learned in those roles as well. I'm sure that there are some recruiters who think that putting your interests or hobbies on a resume is a waste of space, but the way I like to think about it is imagine you are a recruiter and you have to read through hundreds of resumes a month. What makes a resume stand out? if they all have great GPAs, if they all have great experience, if they all have great skills, what makes them stand out is being interesting and having unique experiences that you can use to be a better candidate, whether that's having experience as a debate club leader to show off your communication skills, whether that's being on a soccer team because that shows you are a team player, whatever it may be. Okay, now I wanna show two different versions of this same resume that have a few interesting tweaks. So right off the bat with this first one, you can see that I removed the profile picture and you can also see that I have this little paragraph up top that is called the objective, which is a little paragraph that tells the reader why I am sending in my resume and why I'm applying to the job. The reason why I decided to include this objective paragraph was because I heard from some professionals and professors that it can be a good idea to include this as a way to kind of set your personal brand and clearly state your intentions for applying to the role. However, I don't think it's necessary to include on your resume and you'll see in my current resume that I don't have an objective. Then moving on to the final version of this old resume. I think I had a typo because my exams past are missing, but usually you would definitely always have your exams here at the top, like I mentioned before. At the bottom here, I switched out my activities and hobby section for a relevant coursework section. So I created this resume my senior year of college after I had completed multiple courses in actual science and done numerous projects in coding languages. And I really wanted to show off my technical skills when I was applying to a full-time job, which is why I switched this out. If you have room on your resume, I would recommend trying to fit in a relevant coursework slash project section and a hobbies and interests section. That is what I did on my current resume, which we will move on to next. But if you're someone who hasn't taken that many actual science courses yet or hasn't done that many actual projects, but you want to build up your technical skill set, 
I would recommend trying out Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Building up your coding skills for just a few minutes a day is one of the most important things you can do. One of my favorite parts about Brilliant is that they recently launched a ton of new data science content covering data visualization, algorithms, regression models, and more. And many of these things are important for actuaries to know in their day-to-day -day job. If you'd like to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, you can click the link in the description below. You can visit brilliant.org slash Bella or scan the QR code on the screen here. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now let's take a look at my current resume. So this is my most recent resume that I've created. I last updated this about six months ago. In no way is this resume perfect. There's definitely still improvements to be made. It's still a work in progress, but I do think that it's the best resume that I've created out of all of them so far. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that I reverted back to a more basic visual style because I found that this format is easier for computers to read. If you don't know, when you apply to jobs online, before a human ever even sees your resume, an automated computer system will review your resume and look for keywords to determine whether or not you even have the basic requirements needed for the job. So one thing it may look for is any exams that you have passed. And if you have a very cluttered, busy, hard to read resume, the computer might not pick up on the exams that you've passed and your resume won't even get considered. A tip I have for one thing you can do to really increase your chances of getting an interview is to match keywords in the job description to your resume. So what I mean by this is if you have a job description, you can copy and paste the whole job description, put it into a cloud word generator, and it will tell you the most frequent words that pop up in the job description. Oftentimes, the most common words will be analysis, data, and math, let's say. So then in your resume, you can go in and kind of adjust some of the wording of your experiences and your projects to include more of the words like data, math, so that the computer picks up on those and your resume will zoom to the top because it is so relevant to the job description. I did decide to keep the pop of color in this resume, which you can see in the teal font that I use because that is part of my personal brand. Please don't just copy the formatting of these resumes that I'm showing you because these are specific to me and it won't make sense for you to have a teal font or the same formatting I have or the same wording I have if it is not part of your personal brand or if that is not how you speak. You want your resume to be authentic to you and to showcase who you really are because you are the one applying to your specific jobs, not me. You can see I kept a lot of the same sections as in my previous resumes, like my contact info, my exams at the top, my experience, my education, my skills, relevant coursework, some awards, languages, certifications, and I also included a projects section. One note here is that for my education, I decided to remove my GPA, even though I had a good GPA, just because now that I have a job, they don't really care about my GPA anymore. If you're applying to actual internships and you're still a student, I would definitely keep your GPA on there still because that kind of shows your commitment to the field and how hard you work. But as you get into the career field and you actually start working, they care more about how you performed in your jobs versus how well you did in school. I also decided to take off my graduation date just to remove any sort of bias related to age, but I might put that back on. I haven't decided yet. You probably also noticed that this resume is two pages long. You probably heard that your resume should only be one page or less. And if you are a college student, I agree with that. All three of the resumes I made during college were one page or less, which was definitely hard to do. I think having the, the two column style really helps me fit in all of the information I wanted to. But after you collect more work experience, after you graduate college, then I think it's okay to have more than one page. Last but not least, let's go through a general resume template that will be sure to capture a recruiter's attention. Personally, I've interviewed a multiple candidates for full-time and actual internship roles, and there are some things that I consistently see across the board that I would like to talk about. The resume that I'll be referencing right now is actually a template that I got from Google Docs. They have a bunch of good free resume templates. This resume looks like 
99% of the resumes that I have seen from candidates that I've interviewed. It's in black and white. The name is at the top. The contact info is right under. We have the education at the top, experience, project activities, and additional info like skills and hobbies. There's nothing wrong with this resume. I think that this is a very effective way to set up your resume and to convey information very quickly. But if you have a resume like this, it won't necessarily stand out from the visuals alone. So how do you stand out if this is your resume? The resumes that stand out to me when I read them for the resumes that look like the one in front of us are the ones that are really well written. If your resume is really well written, even if you have the most basic visual style for your resume, there is still a high chance that you will get an interview and a possible job or internship offer. So definitely be sure to draw on the tips that I mentioned earlier in this video when it comes to writing about your experiences and your activities and your projects and think about the psychological concepts. If you're watching this video, you likely care about getting interviews and job offers. So spend a few extra minutes really making sure that your resume is is in good shape because that is the first thing that recruiters see. The only thing that I would add to this resume is an exams section at the top. And if you are a working professional, you'll likely want to have a somewhat different layout. I think this is a great resume for a student because they have education at the top. But if you are a working professional and you decide to use this template, I would probably switch out the experience and education se sections or just generally have experience higher towards the top and education down towards the bottom. We made it through the resumes. Now I wanna talk about some additional resources that you can use to really create the best resume possible. For resume templates, I really like to use either Google Docs or Canva. Both of those are free. Another great resource is to go on Reddit actually and check out the Roast My Resume post. I'll post a few links in the description below you can check out. You can post on Reddit yourself with the resume you currently have and ask for people's advice. I think that's a really great way to get feedback on your current resume and see what you can improve on. And also just by looking at other people's posts and their resumes, you can get a sense of what other people's resumes look like, how you can stand out and what's working for them and what's not working for them. And lastly, a really great resource is a blog article from my friend, Chelsea Adler. She is a credentialed actuary and she has a blog article detailing specifically how to write a great resume. I'll make sure to link that in the description below as well. Of course, creating a great resume is just one part of landing a job or internship offer. If you wanna hear how you can ace actual interviews, some common actual interview questions, and learn how to actually find and apply for actual internships and full-time jobs, you can watch this video linked above. If you're still here, thank you so much for sticking around for this longer video. I hope it was really helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe and stick around because I have some pretty exciting videos coming up in the new year. Bye.